day, everyone joining us for our second episode of Young Energy Talks. My name is uh, Mare Brommer, and I am uh, representing the IDA, the International Geothermal Association, uh, as the host of our Young Energy Talks. We have had the first episode a month ago, and hence this is the second month in our uh, stream. And it is very, uh, very nice uh, to see the uh, feedback that we got on our first episode. And it's a joy to see so many of you returning and also newcomers to our second episode, where we have one member representing our youth uh, committee in this case as well and our youth forum and our youth community for geothermal and one member uh, representing executive leadership. Um, I let the two individuals representing uh, themselves and introducing uh, themselves. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, Jan Longkong representing uh, our youth community, our youth committee, but also the one who actively vouched for getting more youth towards the geothermal community. Jan Longkong, can you please introduce yourself and uh, say a few words on why you think it is important uh, to push and to promote the young uh, energy contributors towards geothermal? Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm very happy and uh, very honorable to be invited here. And thanks to the Merit and thanks to our uh, other organizers uh, together. And uh, <clears throat> I am uh, from the, the Institute of Geology and Geophysics, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, now uh, here uh, I'm working as an uh, associate professor on uh, geothermal energy. And my research interest uh, focus on uh, the geothermal genesis and uh, geothermal reservoir engineering. Uh, during the uh, last event, uh, uh, exactly just uh, about uh, uh, one and a half months ago, <clears throat> uh, in China, I did host the WGC 2023. And during the uh, WGC, we <coughs> organized an uh, youth forum. Uh, for this uh, <coughs> for this youth forum, we have a, a purpose. Just as uh, Marit had discussed with me, we want to enhance the uh, development and accelerate the utilization of geothermal energy. And we hope more uh, young professional could join us uh, to propose uh, the development of geothermal energy. And uh, as we found uh, during the youth forum, we find that lots of young professionals have great passion uh, to do some work on the geothermal energy. They have uh, a lot of, uh, <clears throat> they have a lot of things they want to say, and they want to let the others know, and they want to tell the whole world, we are the, we are the youth, and we can do a lot of work on the geothermal energy. Uh, maybe you're a scientist, maybe you're an engineer, uh, whatever, uh, we can work together to make the geothermal future more bright. Uh, I think this is the basic purpose for the youth forum. Yeah, all right. Excellent, Yanlong. Thank you, and uh, very well put. Um, before we dive into the discussion, I would really like to uh, introduce and let himself, of course, introduce himself, Ajit Menon, uh, VP, Baker Hughes, a very respected and very well-known leader in the geothermal space. And Ajit, it's an honor, and uh, thank you for taking the time. It's six o'clock in the morning in Houston, so thank you for joining us, and uh, the floor is yours for your introduction. Yeah, thank you. And first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to join you this this morning uh, and this evening for the rest of you in Asia. Uh, so as Marit said, my name is Ajit Menon. I uh, uh, lead the geothermal segment for Baker Hughes. Uh, we are an energy technology company. And what, uh, you know, we, we provide a portfolio of, of technology and service that covers uh, all the way from subsurface interpretation, well construction, production to actually uh, surface and power generation because we are an OEM for turbines. So I've I've been in that particular role now for uh, about four years. So it's actually uh, you know uh, quite a long time. But I've been uh, in you know in this industry, energy industry for over twenty years. 
Uh, and I've, uh, you know, I, I'm originally from Asia Pacific, from Malaysia. So I spent a lot of time working around Asia Pacific and been involved in geothermal projects in Asia, which is big for geothermal uh, during that time and also other uh, areas. Uh, I think that geothermal energy and young professionals and the role they play in it is crucial. And the reason I say that is if you look at the impact of climate and you look at who it's going to impact the most, it is our younger generation. So, you know, certainly when I uh, go to universities and look at uh, recruit recruiting exercises, the, you know, the young people today are not just interested in the general, uh, you know, like uh, parameters of why you go and get your first job. They're also interested in their purpose and what they can do or what your organization can help them do to impact positive change and um, amongst that climate change. And I also think that we continually need new ideas in this industry. And also we want to discard some old ideas, you know, like uh, like myself, you know, we've been in the industry a long time. So we, we may be set in certain ways and, and you know, and bringing new uh, perspectives, new uh, uh, views on how we can do things is always important in any industry and especially so in geothermal. So I think uh, uh, these opportunities are great to spread the word about what a exciting place to be geothermal is. And also actually for young professionals, it is quite a small pond. So it's an opportunity for you yourselves to advance your careers and bring positive change to the world. Excellent. Very well put as well. Uh, so uh, thank you for that uh, introduction and also, uh, yeah, making making us uh, aware of uh, of that it is important to have purpose in our in our jobs, uh, especially as you quite rightly said, so the younger generation. They 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 all came together as well in Beijing with that one word on top of their mind. We want to have purpose, and we want to drive purpose towards our uh, next career steps. Um, for the participants, you have the opportunity to ask questions as well, but only in the chat. So use the chat to type your questions to both uh, Jan Long and uh, Ajit. They are happy and they are aware of the fact that they uh, can uh, answer as well immediately. Um, but before you can answer your questions, I am going to uh, ask a few uh, uh, guiding principles uh, towards uh, getting more uh, in-depth conversation between the two. Uh, but by all means, uh, we have around uh, 45 to 50 minutes, uh, and the first 20 minutes is then, let's say, guiding uh, questions, and then the floor is uh, yours in terms of the audience to ask the two participants questions. Um, Jan Long, we met, of course, over the past uh, uh, months quite a few times, and it culminated uh, in Beijing live with over 120 uh, youth representatives from all over the world coming together to discuss the urgency of climate uh, and also the role of geothermal to solve some pertinent uh, issues in, in towards, let's say, creating a better and balanced uh, planet. Now, you seem to be the one who have convened them all. Uh, can you maybe uh, say to, to, to us and also to this audience and beyond, what made you do this? I mean, what's driving you to be that uh, sort of uh, front leader of bringing the youth together and also urging for a youth declaration? Okay, uh, thanks for the uh, next question, uh, Hamarit. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, this uh, can be, uh, um, I have this idea, I think about uh, several years ago when, uh, when once I was uh, in the US I participate in the uh, GRC there, and uh, before the GRC, I found that a lot of uh, participants or the delegates of the geothermal industry uh, they feel very disappointed. And uh, when we discussed, I asked I asked them why. They uh, told me uh, <coughs> they said that um, geothermal energy had been utilized for uh, more than uh, thousand years. Uh, at first, we used it for um, for uh, for shower, uh, just use uh, use the hot spring. And later, we used uh, okay in the past, uh, uh, several decades, we used the geothermal energy to do Swiss heating. But we find that only with a few years, 
with several years, the wind energy and the solar energy increases very fast. What is the future of geothermal energy? How can we compare with them? And after I after I I get back, <clears throat> I uh, discussed this uh, question with many of the uh, young professionals of geothermal energy. I find that <clears throat> they don't feel disappointed. They feel uh, <clears throat> they say no problem. <clears throat> I I find why I ask them why they told me <clears throat> because our geothermal energy has our own advantages because we are the most stable energy we can provide the energy we can provide the same power in in seven days one week 24 hours a day yeah. and then i find that the young professional uh, professional in uh, our juice of energy they don't they don't feel uh, uh they don't feel uh, depressed they don't feel uh, disappointed on the future and I, and then i ask them should we do something together <clears throat> most of them all, all of them <clears throat> uh, yes i should say all of them say yes we should do something and uh, we should let more people let especially from the <clears throat> public we, we should let them know that juice energy has its own advantage and Everybody can use juice and can use juice energy, and especially in the future, <clears throat> we can also uh, use juice energy to store some uh, like uh, the uh, power from uh, from wind and solar energy. We can we can even help them because we are stable. Uh, so uh, from then on, uh, I uh, I and other several uh, young professionals, <clears throat> and we think that we now okay we need a chance to do this. Uh, very soon uh, we get the message that the WGC will be will be hosted in Beijing. Ah, oh, we see. Oh, this is a very good chance. So uh, we talked with the local organizer uh, and say we want to bring the uh, the youth together. Then we can uh, we can uh, speak our own words. Uh, we can let the pub uh, the public know uh, the Joseph Young is very perfect. Uh, we can do uh, lots of things. <clears throat> so. Uh, then we uh, share this idea with the local organizer and then with Marit. Uh, very, very uh, glad that Marit support us. Ah, oh, we are very excited with that. Marit and uh, and the IGA uh, supports us. Uh, and they, they think that the we, we really the youth really should be uh, bring together uh, to do something. Then we uh, did the the, the uh, then. Uh, we want to uh, build. Uh, we want to host a, a youth forum. Then we want to in the near future. We want to have our uh, have a, a committee. Then we can uh, in this way we can continue to do a lot of things. Uh, uh, I think later I can say uh, share more what we want to do. Okay. Excellent. Yes, and thank you for hanging in there and uh, and pushing this all uh, together. And and also thank you for the compliment, uh, Yan Long. But uh, as as IGA, I think this is exactly our role to facilitate, to facilitate that and to 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 bring structure and to help navigate the sometimes difficult uh, circumstances that we have all uh, been through. I guess uh, being uh, you know young and full ideas, uh, but lack of opportunity sometimes due to where you are coming from or. The, uh, the the lack of experience because uh, sometimes that is what you need and then before you get that experience you need to find your job and hence you come in this vicious circle and I guess Ajit over to you because I think this is always the question that people ask how did you navigate your career because now you are at sort of you know at a very high executive level your VP you as you said you have crossed the world uh, born. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I did not know that. So this is for me very interesting. Uh, Ajit, you are from Malaysia, and now you're in Houston. So four years in geothermal. What were your lessons? What can you tell the youth members how to navigate your career, and what made you jump from Malaysia to Houston, or from Bake or within Baker Hughes? What What would be your tips and your tricks for navigating that space? Okay. So first of all, I would say you know like. Uh... There's, there's efforts you make yourself, but also in many cases, it's, a, it's you know, opportunity presents itself. It's a case of 
of timing and and uh, and and sometimes even luck. When in my case, I was fortunate uh, to work uh, or to uh, you know join a, an organization like Baker Hughes, which has you know comprehensive in-house training programs, which allowed me to grow my career according to to a path. But in terms of what you need to be prepared to do is always be curious, always uh, learn, right? You know, like uh, when I started, you know, although I did some work uh, on geothermal in university when I started my career, you know, I was mainly en engaged on other energy activities in, in oil and gas, but, you know, because of where I was working and the fact that there was geothermal resource in the area, that became part of what I did. And I, I I I made my own efforts to learn, right, and uh, and advance myself. The other thing I would say is seize the opportunities you are given, right. Oftentimes you'll be presented with opportunities that at first may seem a bit of a stretch. They may seem uh, it may seem that they're your your concern about whether you can actually do what's required. My advice is seize those opportunities, right? You know, you know, like uh, you, you know, the you just uh, it was just discussed about how young people are not uh, concerned about the issues with geothermal. They see the positive side. They see the benefits. It's the same with with your career when you look at opportunities that are presented uh, that are presented to you. This the same thing I would say applies not just to the opportunity itself. But location, you may be asked to move. You may be asked to disrupt your, uh, your, you know, what you're comfortable with in terms of working environment. And my advice would be is to, you know, obviously there's certain things you can't do, and each person is different. But I would say, as far as possible, seize those opportunities, especially while you are still building your career, and and you know, and put your hand up. Uh, you know, when it's required that, plus continuously learning, you know, like uh, joining, uh, you know, societies, groups that are engaged in areas which you're passionate about. And and that, and that, that would be the next thing, right? It's a lot easier to do well at something if you're actually passionate about the subject matter, right? So, so I think ge geothermal it, it itself although not very well known, people who know it are very passionate about it, including myself, because you look at, at all the benefits it brings and you look at the work that needs to be done to take it somewhere. And so it's easy to get passionate about. So, so I think it, it always helps to advance your career if it's something you're passionate about, because then you put the effort in, you, you know, you, 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 you work hard, you know, all the, the basic things, but they come naturally when it's something you're passionate about. Yeah, true, true. And it's easier to hang in there, right? If you're passionate about something, yeah. uh, you make the extra hours, you disrupt your family life, perhaps, as you say, uh, when there is an, an, an opportunity that you would like to seize. And, 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 and I guess those are very golden, uh, golden tips um, uh, because opportunities are presented throughout the career, right? I mean, I bet, Ajit, even at your level now, you are presented with opportunities that you can seize. I mean, whether it is the business portfolio you can expand or whether it is the opportunity to work in a specific part of the world, opportunities are always there, are always around the corner, right? Absolutely. Uh, I, I would say in myself, you know, I've worked in uh you know like uh, i'm trying to count them now in, a, in in over six countries doing all sorts of very different things you you know like a moving uh between different uh uh parts of the business you know the again one of the fortunate things although i've been working for the same company for a long time because it's it's a it's a a global company with a lot of diverse interests it's almost like working for lots of different companies. You get to do totally different things. Yeah. And that's one more thing I would, uh, you know, you reminded me of something that I would advise, you know, like, uh, like it's not just always about moving up, right? You, you know, like uh, the, there's the impatience of youth, but sometimes you have opportunities where it may not, may not seem like career advancement, 
but they build your portfolio, your experience. You know, I moved between doing operational work, roles to subsurface into roles, you know, like, uh, and, you know, didn't follow just an operational career path or a technical career path. And in the end, it makes you a much more rounded person, which with a lot more experience. If you look, a lot of companies today, they'll even move technical people into uh, the business side, into HR. So you get that uh, rounded uh, uh, experience. So I would say, why you know, don't uh, don't look at your career as just a step ladder of of how high you get, but what you can build in terms of your own capability and learning. Yes, beautiful set, beautiful set, and uh, and quite right. I think uh, one of the things I would like to explore a little bit also with Jan Long, because out of the youth declaration, it became very clear that education, training, capacity building, and providing that level playing field for all our youth members, wherever they are from the world, is crucial in order to yeah, get on to their next step in, in, the, in the geothermal career space. Now, as you, you mentioned within Baker Hughes, you were fortunate enough to also have an internal and access to internal training. Uh, but Jan Long, if you look at, I mean, part of the wording in the youth declaration and also part of the committee's urge towards all of us out there is to provide those training opportunities and to get education really at the forefront of mobilizing the community into the workforce of the future. Because as the youth declaration says, we are the future. And I'm pointing at me, but uh, I am halfway. Yeah? So, uh, but the youth is the future. So Yan Long, um, training, education, and hence getting, getting that backpack full of capacity building. Can you maybe explain a little bit from your perspective, from the youth perspective, the importance and also the urge towards all of us out there to help you facilitate that? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks again for the, uh, this question. And before I uh, answer this question, I want to first, uh, I want to for, uh, I want to first to respond to the uh, dialogue from you and Ajit. Uh, I, I heard a very, very, uh, a very critical word, information. Uh, I think that <clears throat> now we we are living in a world, a, a, a new world where information becomes very, very important. <clears throat> I think, uh, 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 just to answer my uh, last question, uh, why I want to uh, start the, uh, the start the application of the youth committee? I think because information is, is very important. We With this committee, we can share the, the information. Then uh, I answered the question proposed by uh, Marit. Uh, we can also start from uh, uh, from information. Okay, education, training. Oh, sure. In the world, uh, in different parts of the world, uh, we have uh, we uh, we have different technicals, and we use geothermal energy in different ways. That uh, makes uh, that makes us to have different experience. On the utilization of geothermal, on the geothermal energy, for example, in New Zealand, <clears throat> they must have lots of experience on the geothermal power generation because they have a very very uh, nice high temperature geothermal energy. But in China, <clears throat> in our country, for most geothermal fields, uh, they are uh, low to middle temperature. Uh, so we use geothermal energy to do geothermal heating. Uh, so in uh, and in terms of the geothermal heating, we have uh, have we already have lots of experience. So we can share with other countries if they need. And in 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 West China, we have high temperature geothermal energy, but our technicals on the geothermal power generation uh, is not quite good. So we need the experience from other countries, uh, from <clears throat> from from New Zealand, from Ice, uh, from from Iceland, uh, just like that. So I think the training and education is very very important. But now we don't have quite platform on the uh, training and education. Of of course we have the uh, we have the uh, geothermal training school from the United Nations, but. We know there are very quite limited positions. So, <clears throat> in the future, for the uh, for the young professionals, 
especially from some uh, developing countries, they want to have more opportunities to get the training. That's the <clears throat> then how should they do? I think the youth committee and our uh, as well as our youth forum or the, uh, the WGC provide new opportunities for this. Uh, for example, during the uh, WGC 2023, um, before the WGC, we have a short training course. And after that, we can also do the uh, do different ways on uh, training. We can take lots of delegates to see the uh, <coughs> geothermal uh, heating devices in China. I think this is all the ways to uh, to uh, for the training and in future. And 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 in uh, I I also want to emphasize that for the IGA it is it, it is a very uh, it is very very nice that IGA has both scientists and uh, engineers from industry. I think they can bridge the technicals and new uh, science, uh, de uh, developments. Then uh, there are th th there are lots of um high-level scientists and high-level uh, in industry leaders, they can provide their experience through our new platform, like the, uh, like the, like the Youth Committee or like the, uh, the uh, IGA. Uh, but uh, with the new committee, uh, uh, okay, here, I, I want to still come back to our <laughs> Youth Committee because I want, I, I want to say that with the uh, new uh, with the new addition of the youth committee, because we have more time and we have more uh, <clears throat> more people, uh, they have <clears throat> they can help to do a lot of work. So we can do more on the education and uh, and uh, training. We can make the uh, utilize utilization of geothermal energy uh, more uh, fair in different parts of the uh, of the world. We can because we can share uh, more and more knowledge. Yeah, just like. Okay. Yes. No. No. These are all very good points, and and uh, and I like it that you also respond to us to the to the conversation that is uh, happening uh, right now, and uh, and 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 in addition, I mean, uh, I would I would really like to see uh, from a global perspective, of course, that we are providing exactly that infrastructure towards that training, towards that development, uh, and a continuous learning that Ajit was also. Um, yeah, referring to, and that needs to go into a structured way because otherwise it is it is not easy to monitor, it's not easy to measure, um, and hence I'm delighted to see the passion and the willingness because Jan Long now you have volunteered to also do all the work uh, to put that uh, committee, of course, uh, into uh, <laughs> into some uh, operational uh, motive. Um, and that is crucial. I mean, uh, as an association, uh, we can uh, do a lot. Of course, we have many, uh, many members. Uh, we have uh, many volunteers, uh, especially during events. We see uh, a lot of it coming together. But there is also time in between. And I think it is the time in between where the real action sometimes sits, because that's where you are continuously let's say, confronted with the fact that geothermal only contributes 0.5% to the global electricity mix. It's when you read those reports that have a glorious future for clean energy and geothermal is only mentioned as the other technology. And it is exactly during those times that I think collectively with all the associations, the societies, uh, our volunteers and our membership, we need to come together and actually provide all the right data, provide the information, come together as one voice uh, and hence the youth being the caller of the next generation is, is of course, uh, paramount. And, and the fact that we are with many, I mean, we are not a very small community anymore. We are with many, but for some reason, we are still quite fragmented, I guess, over our beautiful planet and hence the... Yeah, the need to to unite and to come forward with one sort of vision is uh, is crucial. Um, and 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 I guess this is also maybe um, uh, uh, Ajit for you to reflect on. People ask me always, of course, on 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 visions and the strategy behind it. And I I was delighted a few years ago, not only with you personally that you took that uh, the helm of uh, of the geothermal within Baker use, but the fact that Baker Hughes has made a strategy and has recognized geothermal as one of the pivotal technologies to enable a cleaner future is, uh, is a key. 
uh, to success because we need big companies like the ones you are representing. And at the same time, it requires a vision. So maybe for the audience and also to collectively inspire our youth that there is a vision for geothermal. Maybe, Ajit, on behalf of yourself and Baker Hughes, of course, what is the vision on your from your perspective uh, towards developing geothermal? So let me step step back a little. You mentioned, you know, like at, at Baker Hughes, you know, I think uh, quite a few years ago now, we were one of, you know, early, one of the early uh, companies to come forward and, and you know, like, and, and, and basically make our uh, climate goals known and also what we can do about it, right? Because, you know, at, at our core, we are a technology company, an energy technology company, and we look to areas where we can impact positive change to the environment through the experience and capability we have. And, and you know, that kind of divides itself into two areas. One is mitigation and the other is renewables. So on the mitigation side, you know, there's carbon capture and storage, there's emissions management uh, of emissions like methane, and we have various technologies to address those sectors. On the renewable side, you know, we are uh, uh, an OEM for hydrogen uh, fuel source turbines, so hydrogen is a pillar, but also geothermal, because, you know, the, the fact of the matter is we've been involved in geothermal for a very long time, so it's a natural fit. Uh, you know, I think the earliest uh, geothermal facility in the world, in La Dallero, in Italy, has our turbines within it, and we've been on in, involved in the subsurface for, for over 40 years. So, so from that perspective, it was easy to you know, to pick geothermal as one of the, pillar, the pillars because we feel we can actually impact and make positive change there through the application of technology. Of course, the other, uh, you know, like area of, of geothermal that is very appealing to everyone is the fact that it's baseload, uh, you know, dispatchable power that's available 24-7, you know, within a small footprint. If you actually look at the premise of geothermal, it's it's exciting. You know, it's a no-brainer why you would want to expand the use of geothermal energy. Now, saying that, as you rightly stated, the the proportion of geothermal energy in, in the renewables mix is very very small. So why is that? So we actually looked at that, and and you know, and and when you look at that, it's it's really down to cost uncertainty and risk. So our vision is what we can do as an organization to address those areas. So, you know, so the take up of geothermal becomes almost, you know, automatic. The the other thing, you know, and, and I, I bring that up because, you know, as Yang Long mentioned, in the past, he's attended GRC and he's heard a lot of uh how can you say almost it's a fait accompli, geothermal is not going to grow, all the reasons why. I think we, you know, and, and he mentioned rightly so, young people say, hey, but, you know, they look at the, the positive impact, and so let's do something about it. And the something we can do about it is on the cost and on the risk. And if we address those areas, then, you know, it it will sell itself, is what, uh, what, what, uh, what I feel, right? The other thing... Uh, we feel the role we can play is, you know, Yang Long mentioned that different parts of the world have different uh, applications in geothermal. In fact, also you find different parts in the world once they've 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 exhausted the rich hydrothermal potential, move to uh, you know like areas that are more complicated, more challenging in the geothermal portfolio that maybe others have already uh, experienced. Companies like us, not just us, but other energy technology companies, you know, we work everywhere, right? We are exposed to all the different types of geothermal activity. And, you know, like, whereas when you look at developers, apart from a very few really large multinational developers in the geothermal space, they're more regionally based. So we have a responsibility as well to help that learning in terms of, of introducing you know, like solutions and applications in areas that have not experienced them before. So I think that's a role we can play as well in terms of, uh, of you know, like expanding geothermal usage throughout the world. 
but but you know when you when you look at the benefits and what existing geothermal activities do it ticks all the boxes that today are considered negatives about renewables because people typically when they think about renewables are thinking about solar and wind so there's a huge opportunity here and uh, and really we feel we can make a difference and and that's why we're all in on geothermal Yes, I think it is the reason why we are indeed all passionate, right? We all love we all love geothermal, and 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 and, and I and I and I hear this from everywhere in the world, you know. Uh, and at the same time, when you step outside our beautiful bubble, <laughs> yeah. it, it is still difficult sometimes to explain what geothermal actually is. But I'm sure collectively we are getting there, right? Because I have been now six years in the IGA. And it has never been as booming as it has been over the past six years. So something has indeed changed. And I think it is a combination between worldwide politics. Let's be honest. It is not an um, it's not a, it's not the same world now as it was uh, 10, 15 years ago. We have, of course, the Paris Accord 2015. Countries are committing more and more to the to the policies. Um, but also there is a there is a real business case for renewables, right? And although certain uh, players may sh shy away from it, we still see that there is a real business case. Uh, and even beyond the traditional metrics of the business case, there is a societal business case. There is a planetary business case. And I guess what I see really changed is that more and more companies, the industry, the sector as a whole is coming together to talk about geothermal as one of the most crucial enablers of baseload affordable energy. And energy, in our opinion, as IGA, we are, uh, of course, uh, not only preaching for electricity, energy to us is also heating, cooling, and everything we can do with energy. And hence, I think, you know, Jan Long, if I read through the youth declaration as well, that is exactly the words you would like to see emphasized as well, that we are a resource industry, you know, we are providing so much benefits beyond electricity. And I guess this is also very important that we keep that jargon and that narrative also to our future leaders um, in the right way. Because, um, uh, and maybe you can share your light, Yan Long, on how you see this, especially coming from China, where geothermal heating is, of course, uh, going through the roof because it is, uh, it is big. You are leading when it comes down to providing geothermal heating solutions. What's the, let's say, what's your observation of getting that message of geothermal beyond electricity across and the importance, of course, of mobilizing, of course, also our younger community uh, to do so? Okay. Yes, I think this is very, very crucial. Uh, in China, I have made a calculation by myself. I find that uh, if we uh, estimated the power generation, we find that some energy takes uh, just accounts for a very, very little part uh, when compared with uh, solar and wind energy. But if we uh, calculate the uh, heat consumption, uh, or we calculate the uh, thermal, thermal, uh, uh, geothermal, uh, for the, uh, geothermal capacity for the uh, space heating and uh, cooling, we find that geothermal energy has the same magnitude uh, with the uh, uh, solar and uh, uh, wind energy, uh, it means that we are in the same level with solar and and uh, uh, wind. In in China, we now uh, do space heating for more than uh, one point four billion. It uh, uh, and and most of you know that in China we have one point four uh, billion for the, the population. So we have about uh, one square meters. Uh, per person uh, for uh, uh, to use uh, geothermal heating. <coughs> this is a, I think this is a very large number, and we uh, want to emphasize that. <coughs> now we say in China, because we have a very very uh, great uh, or difficult task to uh, mitigate the CO two, <coughs> uh, to to mitigate the, the, the to to reduce the CO two. And we say we have five energy, uh, five, uh, we call it non-carbon energy. We call it, uh, we say we have uh, hydropower, uh, wind, solar, uh, geothermal energy. And uh, the other is the, uh, the radioactive <coughs> energy. And I see in the five, in the five non-carbon uh, energy, 
we think uh, juice of energy, juice energy is most important because it it could provide heat directly, and we want to emphasize to our government. We, we want to say that when you uh, when you make the uh, when you make the statistics on the energy uh, consumption, uh, consumption you, you should take the heat use together because in the past years we uh, the government always always want to emphasize uh, just more, uh, not just more, always always uh, they always only take uh, say uh, they talk more about the power generation uh, most of the uh, most of us, uh, most of them, most of uh, for for most times, the government will disregard the use of heat. But when we uh, when we calculate uh, who who gives the to uh, who have the who is the most important source of CO two, we find it is the it is the buildings. Uh, for the uh, for the running of a building, about twenty uh, percent. About twenty percent uh, CO two uh, comes from the uh, comes from the running of the building. So, and we find if we use just some energy, we can at least uh, to reduce ten percent. So this is a <clears throat> this tells us just some energy is is very important, and we want to <coughs> again we want to use all the uh, the media and and uh, as well as our own uh, <coughs> platform to see that. Heat is very important. Heat and cooling is very important. Uh, they are, they are uh, in the, they are the, at least uh, the same important to, uh, to power to, to the power use. Mm -hmm. So, and in this way, juice and juice some energy could provide the heat directly. So, we believe, uh, and in the future, and we find that with the development of a country, uh, when the uh, with the development of a country. The uh, the heat use will become larger and larger. So in this way, in the near future, juice of energy will become more and more important. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I think you're absolutely spot on. I mean, uh, if you look at uh, the worldwide uh, energy consumption for heating and cooling, of course, uh, is fifty percent, and uh, and and and. Yeah. 50% of our daily average uh, life consumes uh, energy for heating up our houses and cooling it down uh, buildings and hospitals and anyway so I, I i i couldn't agree more i think this is exactly why geothermal as in the thermal element of of our technology is uh, is 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 so important um, having said that, of course, uh, the resource behind it, I mean, if you look at what we are doing uh, towards uh, lithium extraction, um, if you look at the direct use opportunity for fish and uh, spas and bathing, I mean, there is such a, 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 a whole array of opportunities out there. So I'm convinced we will grow, but it goes at a pace that is not necessarily interesting for the financiers. And I think this is a crucial point for both, uh, let's say, our community to work harder to make the benefits uh, in a metric system quite clear and quite bankable. And at the same time, we need the leaders coming from, such as Ajit from Baker Hughes, who recognize that there is something to do around the technologies and hence cost and risk reduction is crucial because otherwise no policies will be written into allowing geothermal uh, in their respective jurisdictions. Um, we come at, it always goes so fast. Uh, can you imagine? We've already talked for 45 minutes. So, um, but in between, I managed to throw in some questions that came either before in the audience uh, or now uh, in the stream. Um, so don't think that I cook uh, everything up uh, myself here. Um, but there is one question that I, uh, I think it is a nice one to maybe also round off this uh, conversation. And that is on the importance of innovation. It is on the importance of data sharing. And to a certain degree, and this is always something, also as IGA, we are always keen to understand better. The, you want to have access to data, and at the same time, companies need to protect the proprietary, let's say, data coming out of their wells or from their knowledge gathering and, 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 and collection of data exercises. So maybe, Ajit, you first, representing a company that has, of course, in its possession, but also in its view, uh, uh, a lot of data. And at the same time, you protect, but also you want to share. So how do you exactly 
let's say, do that? And what can we do to create a more open sourced type of environment where data can be used, shared, and innovation can happen? And at the same time, you protect what is yours, which is crucial, of course, for a company to keep its protective uh, competitive edge. So first of all, I would say, when you look in general, uh, as far as data, we're a custodian, right? The data itself is is usually owned by our, by our customers, by the developers, and we take that very seriously. We take uh, confidentiality very seriously in terms of, you know, like the data that we handle, right? Uh, now, what I would say on, on data sharing, there are, uh, you know, methods for data release, uh, conferences actually where where you know like uh, uh, you know like uh, uh, projects are, are finished or there's something to uh, talk about I in fact you know I was at the WGC as well and there were a lot of really good papers and in fact the digital industry is actually quite good in terms of publishing right at, at, at these conferences from what we can do so, uh, you know, one of the things, one of the initiatives we have, uh, which we recently launched, it's called Wells to Watts. Yeah. And it's a, it's a consortium that we formed with other customers and also some uh, in, in industry players uh, where we have uh, retrofitted our test well in our energy innovation center to conduct experiments and, and obtain data on different solutions in the new frontiers of geothermal, you know, starting with AGS and potentially to EGS. And this way that that data is shared amongst the consortium members to advance and de-risk this solution, right? So I think those are ways that you can do it through consortiums where you are pursuing something to solve a problem, right? Uh, you know, in a test environment that then you can take to different uh, different actual environments, right? Uh, I, I I think organizations actually like the I, IGA and others play an important role in in data release. And I I think uh, you know the the owners of the data from what from what I see once a project is developed, once a project is is out there, they're definitely more open to sharing that data and the solutions. That they have established, right? So I, I think, I, I think there's an opportunity actually in this industry. Certainly at the conferences I've been to, I see quite a lot of openness and 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 you know like a, a ability to publish results and and you know because we're all in this geothermal community together. I learn things when I go to the conferences in terms of new solutions or new techniques or or applications. And and that has to continue for all of us, right? To grow the industry, because I think, I think uh, in geothermal in particular, we all benefit when somebody has success. You know? Yes, I agree. Well said, and that is absolutely true. And maybe to round off this conversation, uh, over to you, uh, Yan Long. Uh, again, I'm uh, making the point of us coming together on a more frequent basis, allowing the youth to speak. Uh, uh, again, in the youth declaration, you mentioned that over and over again, there is an urgency and there is also, uh, let's say, a need for the youth members to be heard, to be listened to, but also to have at least a feeling that they are part of something bigger than uh, than just their own, let's say, level, uh, which is still, uh, from a generation point of view, the young generation. Now, a committee, sure, it helps. It will facilitate a lot of structured dialogues. But ultimately, what I gather as well in that room in Beijing, you want to see action. You know, you want to you want to feel that you are part of something bigger. Now. What would be to round off this conversation? What's the call to action? You know, what is it that we all need to do in order to create an industry that is growing, that is accelerating its pace, that it's seeing more project, but also offers the opportunity to our youth members all around the world to get in there and to get to get their boots in the ground. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Only with dialogue is useless. We have to do, yes. We, we need the action and we want to do uh, some things. So uh, for the youth here, I think uh, this is a chance where uh, I want to say to the youth. Uh, and firstly, I here, I welcome uh, 
the youth around the world. Uh, I welcome all of you uh, to join us, to join us together. Uh, we are now uh, trying to build the youth committee to get, uh, together with, uh, uh, you know, as a branch of the IJA. Yes, yes. So we are doing the work on this. <clears throat> so for this work, uh, we need a lot of volunteers to work with us together to <clears throat> Prepare the structure, but the, the, okay, the structure we can do uh, with uh, a, a few members. But later, uh, I want to say that after we, if we, if we, uh, after we have the committee, then we should do more work. The, to have a committee is just a starting point. Uh, not to, to uh, it's not it's, it's not an ending point. Uh, we need to do more work. I think in the near future, uh, I hear, I hope every uh, young professional, um, you can. In uh, in your life, uh, you uh, you can do lots of work to make the public to know more about some energy. You can tell tell them more about this. And if you uh if you uh, have the passion, uh, if you want to do more work, please uh join us. Uh, you can write uh, uh me. You can write to the IJ, and you can also write to me. Uh, to share your uh, to share everything you want to say to us. And now then let's work together to build a platform to make the Jewish energy future more better. Okay, all right. Very good, very good. And all, all words uh, resonate uh, very well. Um, I think it is uh, at your end of the world, Yan Long, uh, it's getting nine o'clock. Uh, I think Ajit is ready to go for breakfast at seven. <laughs> 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 for us it's halfway um i think we should go for lunch maybe uh, at our at our end but uh thank you both uh for staying up late and and, and an early rise uh, uh, at both sides of the world coming together uh, from both uh, leadership uh, in an executive function and uh, and a very passionate uh, youth uh, member um, explaining the reasons why joining uh, is important because that's the only way where you can really make a difference when you when you get in there, when you show that you are committed and when you spread the word about geothermal, and I think that resonates uh, very well with me, with the team here. Uh, I see everyone nodding and uh, putting up the thumbs, but also in the audience, uh, I could see that um, everything you have said today uh, resonates and that is important. We are speaking the same language and this is, I think, uh, what drives us uh, forward. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, this is uh, recorded. It will be posted uh, online on our channels. Feel free to uh, share, record it, uh, and we will make a nice post out of, out of it. But for now, uh, thank you both. Enjoy the rest of the evening and the rest of the day. And uh, see you soon somewhere on this beautiful planet. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>